time for another YouTube knife maker challenge. Thanks for checking out the video. This challenge is for a Viking challenge. So what I decided to make is called an Ulfbert. It's a single-handed, medium-length sword. So they've got a blade about 24, 26 inches. Um, it's going to be kind of lightweight, which is going to be tricky to do out of double layer kumai. So it's going to have a solid core, 1084 steel. I'm going to have a copper line, a high nickel line, another copper line, and then do random pattern Damascus over the top of that on both sides. So the guard and pommel are both going to be made out of one billet of random pattern Damascus also, but that won't have the copper in it. So what I need to do is make three billets, one for each side of the blade because it's going to be a little longer. I don't have a power hammer, so I'm just going to press it out, try to get them nice and even, form those into my solid billet. Um, I've got a picture here of drawn out of kind of what I want. I'll show that in a second. So I guess for starters, we're just going to get going making the three billets and we'll build it from there. Alright, now that's a chunk of steel. That ought to make three nice billets. Now the fun part, getting it all cleaned up before I can weld it together. So here's the billets all done. Each of these two are 30 layers each. We're going to clean these up, restack them, probably cut it into thirds, and uh, that'll give me 90 layers each. That'll be both sides of the blade. This is the bigger one. I left that nice and thick. That one's 47 layers, but this is going to get cut into the, the pommel, which is kind of wide, so that's going to come around here. Cut a guard out of here, a strip for the guard, and then two spacers. That'll go on both sides of the wood for the handle. So we'll get these two cleaned up real good, restacked, and then forge weld them back out again, and that'll be the sides of the blade. Well, one turned out great. This one should be a beautiful billet. Should have great pattern to it, just what I was looking for. Here's the other one. Wah, wah, wah. Total d lamb through one of them. So I'm gonna clean them up, try to weld this one back onto there, and I'm gonna make another one just like this one, just in case. I need two of them. Uh, if this one works, cool, I'll use it. If it doesn't, well, the other one that works like, or is like this, hopefully that one will work, but I'll get two of them that'll match and those will be the outer jackets of the, the sword we're working on. So we'll give it a shot. I can always use whatever steel is left over for a different project, so. Well, here's all the steel. We got everything ready. We just gotta get it put together now into the final billet. One more forge weld. So we're gonna have a chunk of 1080 for our core. Then we're gonna have a layer of copper, a layer of 1095, another layer of copper, and then the outer jacket of this 90 layer random pattern Damascus I made. So one for each side and the rest. And this is that 47 layer 
big thick chunk that I'm going to use to make the guard pommel. Um, maybe the spacers. I might do something different for the spacers. I was thinking about making maybe some mokumegane out of quarters again and use those. I think those would look kind of cool. Uh, we'll see though. But we're going to get these cleaned up, cut out, forged up, and I'll show you the next step. Got the steel all cleaned up, ready to go. We're going to get it turned into a billet now. Okay, all welded up. That is one big ass chunk of steel. But, not pretty. It's really a pain in the ass welding with the copper in there. That copper wants to mess up your gas and it just doesn't want to hold right, but I believe it is good enough. It should hold that copper in there while, while I'm forging it, so. finished billet I think it turned out pretty good I was hoping for a little bit longer but if I go too much thinner than this you know it's probably about 3 eighths right now so once I clean it up we're gonna get at about quarter inch which is about the thickness I need up here and then the tip down here can get narrowed down quite a bit so I probably could have stretched this and got another inch or two out of it but I think we're just gonna leave it where it's at just so the pattern stays consistent all the way through Here's the billet all cleaned up. Turned out pretty nice, but it's not quite thinned out as much as I want. So there's a couple spots here where I'm right at just a hair over a quarter inch, I guess. Let's try to show you here. You know, just a touch over a quarter. But some of these areas down here, we got a, a bit thicker. You know, it's probably closer to three eighths there. Um, overall, it turned out great, though. You know, the welds look really good all the way around. You know, you can see the pattern in it. There, you can kind of see it a little bit. So that's what the pattern's going to look like. It's got the two lines of copper in it. There, you can kind of see it. So. So far she's looking pretty good. I want to get 26 inches out of the blade. You know, and we're looking at 26 right to where the, the Damascus ends. So I think what I'm going to do is I cut a couple pieces of this. It's just some mild steel that's painted. And I'm going to make a canister out of it. So I'm going to cover up the, the both sides. And then I'm going to weld the edges all the way around again to keep that copper in there. And I'm gonna try and draw this out another couple inches. Try to get the billet really close to a quarter inch all the way through. Keep that copper in there. Probably get these off and then stretch her out again, clean it up. And I think I'll be looking at exactly what I want. I'm gonna keep all this on here. This will all be extra for making a hopefully a full tang out of it. But at least a lot of, you know, the whole handle will be inside the tang. And if I gotta weld on a little for the pommel, I mean it shouldn't be an issue should be plenty thick that I can weld onto it so it'll be strong but yeah that's gonna be one hell of a sword though so on to the next step we'll turn this into a canister get her in the forge and draw it out again
here's the finished billet. Turned out pretty good. We got another five or so inches out of it, so probably 30 inches of good usable. Definitely got our two inches wide, so you know, see some of that outer jacket I put on there split away a little bit, but that's fine. It was just to protect the outside from scaling up too bad. I did have one little squish where I saw some copper squirt out of an end here. Um, we'll have to get her cleaned up and see how she turned out. So I'll get to cutting all this off and clean the ends up again and see what we're dealing with. So here it is cleaned up a little bit. Um, length is really good. Thickness looks really good. Everything turned out pretty good. Except for this little prick right here. Son of a... So, where I got a little bit of a kink in it on the press, I tried straightening it out and the copper must have been too hot right there and it pushed it out, split it up. So, I'm going to have to cut that out of there. Um, I don't think we have quite enough length to get a 26 inch sword out of just that piece. You know, I can make something else out of that end, but I'm wondering if it's not too deep inside, maybe I can just kind of neck the sword down here a little bit and come back or get it a little thinner towards the tip a little bit. I know a Ulfbert is not supposed to be tapered, but anyway, there's nothing I can do with that. So I'm going to have to cut that out of there and I guess we'll just revise our plan and move forward. I think we're going to be able to salvage it. So that spot that kind of screwed me up a little bit, I can still get a pretty long straight sword out of the billet I got. So I cleaned it up a little bit. You can see the pattern in the Damascus there. It's going to be pretty nice. If I can get this thing ground right, she's going to be beautiful. But So this will be where my, uh, my tang will start. So I'll have the tang in here and I'll, I'll add on to this to get the rest of the handle done. But that should give me plenty of good solid meat for a good strong handle, tang. And we still got plenty of width if you're looking all the way down. So you're still looking at an uh, inch and three eighths probably wide there towards the tip. So overall, I think it's going to look pretty good. It's going to wind up being a pretty big sword. So here I decided the tang was a little bit too thick and a little bit too short. So we'll just throw her back in the forge, heat her up, and stretch her out a little bit. Getting a little thinner is no issue at all there. The Damascus wasn't even in that part. It's more core steel and some of the other stuff. So this will work just fine. Get the length I need and make it nice and strong. Well, I want to thread the pommel on, so I'm going to need to put this bolt in there, make it nice and strong. So I figured with my hand about here, it's about where it'll thread on, it's right about there. So we'll just give it a good old smush in there and Here's one way to put a fuller in. It works great, but it sure is slow. So there's the fuller. Very crudely roughed in, but got her done. So now I'm just gonna very crudely also rough in the bevels. And then we'll be ready to start thermal cycling. Well, now I'm going to thermal cycle the steel. But I'm a little concerned here. The reason I stopped this fuller way back here is because of that. It's kind of hard to see, but I was hoping that this was just the copper lines here. 
and I knew there was a little D-lamb there. I thought maybe I could grind that out, but I almost have a feeling that this is going to be a little bit deeper here. But it'll really show itself once I thermal cycle the steel and go through the heat treatment process. And if I got to cut that off, I got to cut it off. You know, I think worst case scenario, I'd have to just cut right here to be the end of the blade. You know, maybe like right about here. And then I could just grind this down and get rid of that piece. You know, because it's really solid back here. So we're still going to be good. I'll still be able to get a full sword out of it. I'm just a little concern about that opening up. later it's cooled down again turn the forge back up Oops. cycle everything so we'll let that cool and we'll do one more and put her in the vermiculite so it cools nice and slow All the thermal cycling is done. This was the area I was concerned about. You know, you can see it kind of definitely got a D lime here where the Damascus let out, let loose from the outside of the copper. Problem is, I got one back here too. This I might be able to grind down and fix up a little bit. Um, you know, just that fuller is going to get widened out there anyway. The big problem is that shit balls. Unfortunately, that's. I mean, that's a big chunk of the sword I'm going to be missing. And there's no fixing that now. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut this thing off probably about here. Make my tip in here and then bring it down to just the core steel for the tip. Which will get rid of that completely. The nice thing is, is the rest of the sword all looks great. It turned out just beautiful. A lot of work to do to still sand it and clean it up better, but... But I got to get rid of this here, so unfortunately, I think if I start the the taper probably about here and bring it out, I can probably get that much length out of it, you know, and I'll have to clean that away. Hope, well, either way, I know if the welds are good in there, they would have popped out inside the fuller. So, unfortunately, let's see what I'm going to wind up losing here. Yeah, I'm probably going to lose probably a full 8 inches off the sword I got now. So my Ufbert is going to become a short sword, but it'll be a beautiful short sword. Oh, this is going to hurt. I 
went from a beautiful basically 25 inch blade and with that D-Lamb now we're looking at yeah, 17 17 and a half basically but it's still gonna be really cool there's no D-Lambs anywhere now still got them two beautiful copper layers in it with the Damascus so I went from a full oof burt to a short sword but it is going to be a badass short sword hopefully no more problems Ready to go. So, wife's not home. So I get to use the oven. Don't anybody tell her. So we're gonna temper that. We're gonna do two cycles, two hours each at 400 degrees. Letting it cool in between. Got the garden pommel done or just roughed in anyway so that's 47 layers of Damascus Forged flat and cooled down turned out pretty good so I got options of three different Mocha Megane spacers this one's got a little twist to it it kind of flattened a little crooked so might have a little twist to it when we grind the edges up all right there's three Mocha Megane spacers so the mill's gonna get drilled out anyway so I'll probably have one of these next to each of the guard and the pommel I don't know, I'm debating on whether I want to put one in the middle or not. Maybe with a couple colored spacers, probably look pretty cool. Yellow or gold or something that'll look nice with all the copper in there. I don't know if you can see, I probably can't see the lines in there yet, but that's 12 quarters smashed together, each one of them. Should look really cool when it's done, especially paired up next to the Damascus. I don't know if you can see the layers in there yet. 42 layers in there and turned out really nice. On to the next step.
Well, unfortunately it didn't work. So it closed up real nice, you know, looks great until I cleaned it up a little bit. You can see the, the d lamb still all the way through. It just split under pressure and I got it to close up, but it just wouldn't seal. So she is junk. I made another one though, and it turned out way better, so. Okay, here it is ready to glue up. So I cut these pieces of stabilized dyed burl wood. I've got some spacers here. I got G10, some cloth, my mocha megane, Damascus garden pommel. There's the blade. And somebody said he wanted to be an assistant. Hi. <laughs> so we got Tavis here gonna film and make sure I'm doing it right. Probably hand me some stuff and we'll get this thing epoxied up. All right, so Tavis, take the cover off those. Take them both off, and then I want you to squeeze it onto here. Just a little bit. A lot. You're gonna need to take it both. No, you gotta squeeze them at the same time. We gotta have equal amounts of both. So, right in the middle, tip them straight upside down, and try to get the same amount. And kind of like this so they're right next to each other and just squeeze and try to get them pretty equal go up a little higher so it falls and just keep going squeeze them squeeze them give her the beans <laughs> you're gonna need a lot so you having trouble squeezing I'm not really no. so squeeze it you're not even a quarter of the way there yet, so squeeze them hard. There you go. Get her done. Equal amounts though. Squeeze this one harder. You gotta squeeze this one harder. Keep going. What are you laughing about? This is a lot. Yeah, I had a lot of work to do. All right, that's probably good. All right, so put the blue cover back on the blue one. I'll get these mixed I up. I dented them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is a two-part epoxy. They do nothing by themselves, but you mix them together and they turn into a super strong glue. And we need a lot when we're gluing this many things together. Remember how many pieces I said we're putting in here? Mm -hmm. How many? One, two, three, four, five, you don't six, remember, then you're counting. Twelve. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13. You were wrong. All right, so now we start putting it all together. That's a lot. Perfect really need quite a bit of epoxy for the end. Oh, really? This one's threaded. Just gotta make sure it locks in. That's Which it will. It. Yeah, but it's threaded. It ain't just glue. There. Maybe. Hopefully. There we go. That's way better. Whoa. Careful with the epoxy. <laughs> All right, now I just gotta make sure that's straight. Whoa. That's gonna be pretty. All right, thanks for the assistance, Mr. Tudor. Mm -hmm. Nice job.
it's all done we're gonna give it a good wet sand I got 2500 grit paper just scuff it up one last bit and then it's gonna go into the ferret chloride Okay, wet sanded to 2500 grit. Now it's time to cover the parts I don't want in the ferret chloride with my wife's nail polish. I stole the pink from her this time. Pink it is. Alright, moment of truth coming up here. she goes it's been five minutes in there now let's see what we're dealing with pretty early to tell yet but starting to look really good all right we'll get that cleaned up a little bit and get her back in for round two Three. All right, all the ferric chloride is done. It's been in the instant coffee for eight hours. Well, it's hard to see. We'll get her upstairs and get her cleaned out good and see what we got. Alright, this is baking soda to neutralize any acid in the instant coffee. 